Now for me to make more than a single video about a game, it either has to be uniquely enjoyable and absolutely incredible, or entirely atrocious. Risk of Rain 2 falls in the first category. Now after 160 hours, I told myself I was done. But then the devs consistently improved the game and came out with nothing but fantastic patches, consistently adding more and more content to what was already an exceptional dungeon crawl roguelike. In fact, that's how they suckered me in, with the big punch grapple hook robot character whose entire kit revolves around velocity. If you want to make them bleed, you have to move at a high speed. And since I already reviewed the game, I can just cut in live loud music and do a handful of zoom pan jump cuts, cause why in the hell would I come up with a narrative and write a script when I can just shamelessly plagiarize Red Riot's entire channel for my own monetary gain? <laughs> Suck it. I got bitches, I got hoes, I got real designer clothes. Say you found yourself in my position, absolutely speed running the game as chess costs are directly tied to how much time has passed, and that you had procured not just the brilliant behemoth, which makes all your attacks explode, but also a second legendary item which has a chance to summon the monsters you kill to fight for you. Say that somehow this was the case, and at only 16 minutes you go to bust open the legendary chest, only to be graced with a lucky clover which lets every single item you hold roll twice for a chance to have its effect, you would know at this very moment that you had a god run on your hands. Runs like this are pretty fun. I'm earning money so fast that it's viable to buy all the drones and turrets. In fact, it's advisable, seeing as you carry them over to the next stage and everything they kill gets you more gold. My character is a robotic homicidal maniac who gets more autistic the faster he punches. I have a 100% crit chance and automatically fire a barrage of missiles every 20 seconds. Once I kill my enemies, I have a very high likelihood to enslave their souls in my ever-increasing army of undeath. So we open the golden portal, because this isn't an investment of money where you'd want to go for low volatility dividend paying stocks. No, this is an investment of your time. Real shit, high risk, high reward. That was close. So we acquire currency and activate the seven altars to fight Aurelianite. It's very simple. We use every ability the moment it comes off cooldown with no regard for our own safety. If I fail the DPS check and it becomes invulnerable so we activate all the altars again, we face certain death. But I'm telling you, glass cannon speedrunning is the only way to play this game. Anyone claiming otherwise is likely a controlled operative peddling deception, falsehood, and trying to sell you snake oil. You're gonna want to avoid advice from such charlatans who would piss in your ear and tell you it's raining. Because when you beat Aurelia Knight, the absolutely based game devs grant us an item that summon him during every teleporter event. This is where a god run turns into a planar crack run. This is the point where our power spike goes from exponential to extraterrestrial. Yep, that's two. This is why they call me Black Salami. This is actually the very moment where I took a little break from playing Risk of Rain 2, as there was something else that uh, really took up my attention. Oh, didn't see you there. My bad. I was just busy poning some noobs on my phone. Take a look. It's called AFK Arena, and they're gonna do for my ad revenue situation what 3D printing did for assault rifles. I've been playing AFK Arena like crazy. In fact, no matter what situation I find myself in, I can't seem to put the game down. When I'm riding a horse on top of a building, 
Whoa. I simply can't take my eyes off the screen no matter what I'm doing. Uh, whoa. <laughs> whoa. Even on a Viking children's playground, I'm playing AFK Arena. When I'm walking in the forest, I'm playing AFK Arena. Now let me stop being silly. AFK Arena gave me creative freedom, so I don't have to read a list of buzzwords. I like that. I like that a lot. The game's pretty fun. Personally, I like that it's not turn-based. I get to click on stuff and decide the order and timing of special moves. It's also not unnecessarily convoluted. Everything is very accessible and easy to understand, even for a lower intellect such as myself. You can even get rewards for not playing the game. I don't know how that's a valid marketing strategy, but they keep getting away with it. Bottom line, the game's free, microtransactions aren't a necessity for steady progression, and if you use my link, you're supporting my channel directly. With that being said, I'm not gonna lie to you and pretend like I spend all day playing phone games. All day wouldn't cut it. I play this shit while I'm sleeping. I play whilst playing other games. It's the reason I lost the run I was just showcasing. And with that, I want to say thanks to AFK Arena for sponsoring the video and return to your prescribed daily dosage of loud music and zoom pan jump cuts. But whilst the digital insanity key gen music builds up to the drop, let's go over all the tweaks and additions that have elevated this game to greatness. A handful of new characters and loadouts that let you specialize which abilities you want on each one. They've also redesigned most maps to be in part procedurally generated. That way you don't get the exact same layout over and over again. You got damage, healing, utility, adaptive and cloaked chests. On top of that, they've also added a bunch of new maps and features like the void portal. We'll get to that later. You also got new mobs like the scavenger that drops 10 items or the ally worship unit which drops a legendary. Even on high end runs you have to go even deeper to push the game to its limits with the addition of Malachite and Celestine elites. In fact, that was my goal with this next run. I wanted to push the game to its utmost limit. I picked the ultimate late game character Multi. Ever since I found out they gave him a buzz saw, I've been fiending for the absolute shock the central nervous system undergoes during a late game multi run. Take note of what happens on the very first stage. I jump down from here and use my healing item mere frames before hitting the ground, leaving me at an uncomfortable single health. This was my sign. I knew that I was about to induce Carpal Tunnel and sacrifice several hours of my life. Welcome to our Hear me out, two lucky clovers, so near guaranteed proc from every item on every hit. 55 dirty needles for an adequate attack speed. Two different healing equipments cause I don't fuck around. I heal every time I damage or kill enemies. My healing is doubled and now Aegis. Any healing past max health grants a shield. I even pick up another legendary because around the two hour mark is where a risk of rain run really starts to pick up the pace. Two and a half hours into the run, I decided to enter the void. The 
Void is circumstantially the most difficult stage. You have to activate 9 various rifts and wait for them to charge. If you're outside the little bubble you take damage and the more rifts you charge the more different mob types will spawn. They'll also be equipped with 2 common items, 2 rare items and eventually also a legendary item. Under normal circumstances this can be quite a challenge. But when you've spent nearly 3 hours of your life becoming Wally if he was juiced to the gills, it's rather benign and what Risk of Rain enthusiasts such as myself refer to as the start of the run. With the Hardlight Afterburner, we just turned this crusade into a drive-by. Okay, I'm just gonna be real. When I said drive-by, I meant standing still. Because when you get to this level on Risk of Rain, the absolute utmost limit of the late game, bar none, the most effective way to play the game is to absolutely not play the game and stand entirely still. This will perfectly decimate your opposition without giving them even the slightest chance to damage you. If you can actually refrain from moving your character, you are completely invulnerable. At this stage of progression, there's three things left for you to do. Stress test your graphics card by attacking stuff. Think of it as like a little mini game to see how low you can get your frame rate. Reroll all your items with a lunar altar if you find one, which I did not. And finally, let your dopamine crusade come to an end by entering the Celestial Portal. If you happen to have the Beads of Fealty, instead of terminating your existence in a moment fractured, you'll actually be transformed into your planar form and enter a moment hole, the Astral Dimension, where you'll find a special scavenger named Twip Twip, who drops 10 lunar coins instead of items. Any lame-brained child would be ecstatic to get this many coins. Any sensible adult used five lines of code in a wordpad file to give themselves infinite lunar coins and unlock everything in the game. As the screen fades to black, I'll provide a final verdict. Risk of Rain 2 was one of the best games to come out last year, and it has marginally improved without diverging from the outstanding formula. It pushes the boundaries for what an ADHD roguelike can be, and you can get a Steam key for like 10 bucks. By increasing the limit of what you're able to do in a run and making the game less repetitive, Hoopoo games are bordering on modern day video game perfection. I rate this the second best game in the world. Right behind AFK Arena. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah.